When St. Patrick was 16, he was captured by Irish marauders, who forced him into slavery for the next six years of his life. It was during this time that he was trained to be a shepherd and to look after the sheep in the fields. Eventually, Patrick was able to escape back to his home in Britain, but he was forever changed by his time spent in the fields amongst his sheep. St. John Paul II said that priests should have the heart of Christ the Good Shepherd. But why is that? In the 2014 movie Calvary, Brendan Gleeson plays a priest in a small Irish town. The movie opens with Father James sitting in a dark confessional, waiting to hear the confession of a penitent, when he is startled by the voice of an unseen man who tells him that he was horribly abused by another priest as a child. And as revenge, he was going to kill Father James the following Sunday. There's no point in killing a bad priest, but killing a good one. That'd be a shock now. They wouldn't know what to make of that. Father James is understandably nervous, but he continues to serve the thankless town that he lives in. A town where he is routinely mocked, insulted, and treated with distrust. What were you saying to her? I wasn't saying anything to her. Oh, really? You looked at a conversation to me. But in spite of it all, he cares for his flock, visiting them by boat, foot, and car. However, as the week nears Sunday, the attacks against Father James escalate. First, his church is burnt down, and then his dog is murdered. In an agony, he finds himself wondering if it would be better for him to leave town and never come back. Fortunately, an encounter with a saintly woman reminds him of who he is, which is the good shepherd of this town. And he decides to stay with his people and to face the man who had promised to kill him. The movie ends with Father James walking the road to Calvary, as it were, to face the previously unknown man who had promised to kill him. And instead of running from the pain, he makes one last desperate attempt to bring his sheep home before he is executed there on the beach. It's not too late, Jack. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Say your prayers, Father. The image of a shepherd is often romanticized, but the reality is that shepherding is a dangerous and brutish work. A work that can oftentimes put the shepherd in real danger. Father James wasn't a good shepherd because he watched his sheep from afar, or because he really liked some of them. Father James was a good shepherd because he was willing to sacrifice his life for them and to put himself in great danger for them. This is why shepherds need a heart like Christ, a heart like the one a real Irish priest named Monsignor Hugh O'Flaherty had. O'Flaherty was nicknamed the Scarlet Pimpernel of the Vatican by German Gestapo during World War II. The Nazis had occupied Rome and a man named Colonel Kapler was put in charge of the occupying forces with the directive to weed out and exterminate every Jew and British POW in the city. However, the Scarlet Pimpernel had other plans in mind. Monsignor O'Flaherty was an Irish priest and a member of the Roman Curia that worked for Pope Pius XII, who was doing his best to maintain the Vatican's neutrality during the war while at the same time trying to take care of the thousands of Jews and British POWs who were coming to the Vatican in search of refuge. O'Flaherty grew up in Ireland in the midst of guerrilla war, a war where his friends were routinely murdered by British black and tan soldiers. But his shepherd's heart was bigger than his hate, and he set to work at rescuing every British soldier who came to him in need. He began by standing outside on the steps of St. Peter's Basilica every day, looking for those who were in search of asylum, and then worked tirelessly to find them places to stay in Rome amongst his large social network. At first, it was rather easy, but as he grew more successful, Colonel Kapler became more frustrated. At one point, Kapler ordered that a white line be drawn around the Vatican, and that if Monsignor O'Flaherty stepped across it, he was to be shot dead. But the avid boxer, O'Flaherty, was not easily intimidated, 
and it only strengthened his resolve. So he began sneaking out of the Vatican in various disguises to continue finding places to hide for the Jews and British POWs that came to Rome. As the war came to a close and the Allied front neared Rome, the tides began to turn. And instead, it was the Germans who began coming to Monsignor O'Flaherty for help. And even the man who had been tasked with torturing and executing witnesses for the Nazis went to Monsignor O'Flaherty in search of help, asking him to get his family out of Rome before they were killed by angry partisans. My wife and two children, you're asking me to save your family. If you really believe what you preach, you'll do it. This is why John Paul asked for priests with the heart of Christ, the Good Shepherd. Because good shepherds know their flocks and they smell like their sheep. They know the struggles that they have and they minister to their sheep, but also correct them when they have done wrong. They protect and defend them from evil and even sometimes lay down their lives for them. To be a good shepherd is to be another Christ. And Christ's ultimate act as good shepherd was to lay down his life for his flock. This is the same reason why St. Patrick, after being taken as a slave by the Irish people, returned to Ireland to serve them as a bishop for the rest of his life. And it's the same reason why Monsignor Hugh O'Flaherty continually put his life in danger in order to serve the British soldiers who had killed his loved ones as a child. And why every month he went to visit a man in prison who received no other visitors. A man who he had called his arch enemy during the war, and a man he would eventually call brother when he baptized him into the faith years later.